for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday evening, December the 25th, 1977. Midwinter camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp, Hot Springs, Arkansas. The speaker of the evening is John Boney. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give to the Lord a clap offering. How about that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, everything that we could give unto him. It's his. Praise the Lord. By the way, do you know the purpose for which God created you? Yes, to praise the Lord. We, we were singing the, the verse a while ago from Revelations 4, 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are, and they were created. I want to tell you tonight that you were not created for your good looks. <laughs> Amen. If some of us were created for good looks, we'd, <laughs> we'd be forgotten a long while. We were not even created for what we could do. Now, I'll tell you tonight that God does not need your ability. God cannot use your ability. Your ability just destroys what God wants to do. And the minute we think that we could do something, it's the minute we get in God's way. I'll tell you also tonight that God does not want you working for Him. Do you know that? God does not want a single person working for Him. God is fully sufficient to work for himself. Amen. God is fully capable to work for himself. And there are many people who try to work for God, and then they just mess things all up, so God has to come back and do something. And you know, it's an interesting thing in, in Mark chapter 16. Let's look there. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Now, God does not want you to work for him. But God wants to work with you to accomplish his purpose in the earth. Amen. And the moment you think that you could do something for God, it's the moment you have gone beyond God's help. And now I tell you this, that God is indeed a jealous God. God created you for one purpose, for himself. Amen? God created you for himself, for his glory, for his purpose. Now you say God's a jealous God. Well, yes, he is. He's a jealous God. And God created us. So that in this earth, he could have a people who would give glory unto him. God created you so that you could glorify him while, while here on earth. Now, when Jesus walked this earth, Jesus brought glory to the Father. In everything he did, his stated purpose was to bring glory to the Father. When he worked miracles, it was to bring glory to the Father. When he ministered the Word, it was to bring glory to the Father. Now, Jesus was a radical. Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. But as I see the Father do, that's what I do. He said, my doctrine is not mine. 
But if you do, you'll know that the words I speak unto you are from the Father. Because Jesus was solely wrapped up in the Father, in doing the Father's will. Tell you this, that God created, and His work of recreation is for a single purpose. For the Word of God has said, For as surely as I live, saith the Lord, all this earth shall be filled with the knowledge of my glory. That's what God has said. Now, I tell you, I was pondering this the other day, and I can't understand it. But that God has placed his life at stake. God said, as surely as I live, all this earth shall be filled with my glory. If I'm alive, then it's going to happen. How many of you ever thought of God being dead? No, no. He's alive. And as surely as he lives, this earth shall be filled with the knowledge of his glory. I bless God for that. Amen. Because imagine how Moses just going up to the mountain and having a glimpse of God's glory. And he came down, they had to put a veil over his face. For he shone so much with the glory. Imagine also, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus just for a moment appeared in his glory. And you remember what happened? The disciples fell down and stared. They couldn't stand it. Now as surely as God lives, all this earth shall be filled with the knowledge of his glory. You know how that is? How that will be? Through you. Through you. Now, let me mention this again. When God created us, when God made man, he made man for his glory. And God would come down in the cool of the day and walk and talk with man. To fellowship with himself. But you know what happened? Sin separated man from God. Sin just destroyed that. And God looked for others to whom he could bring forth his glory. The Lord went particularly at this time to the nation of Israel. And God made a promise to them. In Exodus chapter 19. Let me read from verse 3 in Exodus chapter 19. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying... Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then shall ye be unto me a peculiar treasure above all people. For all the earth is mine, and he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. And this was a covenant that God made with the children of Israel. If you keep my words and do as I command you, you shall be unto me a peculiar people, a kingdom of priests, the whole nation that was extended to them. Now, the children of Israel, they did not keep the covenant with God. How many of you know tonight that God is a God of covenants? All throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, God has in His grace made covenants with man. He started with Noah and He made a covenant. And He said, No, I'm covenanting with you. That I'll never again destroy this earth with water. And as a symbol of that, God put a rainbow in the sky. And all through God made covenants with Abraham, with Isaac, all the way on. But God, with the children of Israel, made a covenant. I have something I want to do with you in this earth. But as I said before, God is a jealous God. How many of you know what's the middle letter in the word sin? That's the middle letter. And all of sin is self-interest, 
self-desire. I want to tell you, even Christian people need freedom, need deliverance from self-desire. Just recently I was considering with someone else this. And I noticed that there are many people who are craving to have an outstanding ministry. They want the type of ministry that when they lay hands on people, they fall all over. Miracles drop off their fingers. I want to tell you tonight something, brethren. To desire to have that. Above all else, is wrong. To desire to minister unto people is wrong. You may open your eyes and wonder, well, what are you getting at? I tell you this, that God did not create man to minister unto man. And the Word of God has abundantly said that God created us for himself. That's the only purpose. And any ministry that any one of us would have must flow out of a relationship with God and not the other way around. I tell you tonight that there are many men ministering in their own power. There are many men who have ministries, but their lives do not bespeak a relationship with God. Why? Because they have missed the boat. God created you for one purpose. For himself. All your attention, all your time should be centered on God. And it is as you have a vertical relationship, will there be a true horizontal relationship? It is as you have a correct relationship with God that out of that will flow a relationship and ministry to people and not the other way around. You don't minister to God by ministering to people. You see, there's so many people so wrapped up in the work of God that they have no time for the God of the work. There's so many people so wrapped up in doing things for God and they have no time with God. God wanted a nation, a kingdom of priests. Now let me ask you tonight, what is the job of a priest? Do you know? What's the job of a priest? Is the job of a priest to go minister it unto people? Hmm? Look at me. In Exodus chapter 29. Exodus chapter 29. Folks, I want to show you tonight the lofty purpose for which God created you. I want to show you that tonight. Because God created you indeed for a special purpose. For himself. So that God may be all and in all. Amen. That's what God created you for. So that on this earth he can have representatives who look like him, sound like him, act like him. That's why God has created you. That's why God has made you a new creation. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Praise the Lord. Praise now let's look at it in, in Exodus chapter 29. This is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Now I want you to notice that. Let's, let's jump back to chapter 28. And in all the commissioning of the priests, they were told one thing. Exodus 28, verse 1. Take thou unto the heir and thy brother, his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto, unto me. In the priest's office. At the end of verse 3, it's the same thing. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Verse 4, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. The job of a priest is ministering to God. Amen? You see, in this age, in this time, 
We are all priests unto God. If you are priests unto God, your job is to minister to God. Now, you could have no higher ministry than ministering to God. How many of you know tonight that the children of Israel failed in that ministry? They failed miserably. They went out and did their own thing. Look at me in Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 44. And Ezekiel 44 is a pitiable tale of a people who failed God. A people who got so wrapped up in the work of God that they missed out on God himself. Let me read Ezekiel 44 from verse 6. Thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, we, house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought unto my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat, the blood, and they have broken my covenants because of all your abominations, ye have not kept the charge of my holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge and my sanctuary for yourselves. Let me point this out to you tonight. That many of many times we come together, and we come together to get. I come and I want a blessing tonight. I've just come to soak it all up, and many times we go away disappointed. Why? Because we have selfish motives as Christians. If you want to get the way to get is not to come to get. If you want to get the way to get is to come to get. And folks, if you come to this week of meetings here to get, you're going to go home disappointed. Maybe for a while you'll have goosebumps. But after the goosebumps are gone, there would have been nothing lasting. But if you came and said, I've just come to praise God. I've just come to minister unto God. As you give unto God, I guarantee you on the authority of God's word that you're going to get something that's lasting and something that's life changing. You can say, well, bless God, they've got Harris Miller, who's going to be ministering? Who, who are the others ministering now? McCall and whomsoever else. Well, bless God, we're just going to sit down and soak it up. Or oh, the word won't go very deep. It wouldn't go very deep at all. <laughs> Give, and it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Press down, shaken together shall men pour into your bosoms. You see, in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it talks about this meeting, the half a meeting, as one brother said. And when you come together, the preachers have a message. Isn't that what it says? When you come together, every one of you has Amen. One has a psalm. One has a term. One has an interpretation. One has a doctrine. And you come with it and you come bubbling over to give it. You may not even get the chance to give it. But coming to give, bless God, you come with your heart bubbling over to give unto God. And you give and God gives back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That's what the Word of God says. That's what it says. That's what it says. Come to give unto God. Give unto God the glory. Do unto His name. Enter into His courts of praise. And with thanksgiving, be thankful unto Him and bless His name. Amen. You may need to give unto God a sacrifice. That's all right. 
God's well pleased with that. Well, I tell you, the children of Israel made a mistake. They paid other people to do the work that they were supposed to do. And you know, many of us either still are or maybe have come from the kind of situation where we come on Sunday mornings and we sit down. Pastor preaches, he reads the Bible, the choir sings, and we sit down. Being holy. Being silent. It's deafening. The silence. Praise God that you can be cut loose from those shackles and come together and lift holy hands without wrath and doubting unto God. Amen. And with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I enjoy that book. I really do. They're paid people to do what God wanted them to do. It's still happening today. Still happening. Verse 9. Thus said the Lord God, no strange uncircumcised and half non-circumcised with flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel and the Levites that had gone away far from me. When Israel went astray, which went astray uh, away from me after their idols, they shall bear their iniquity. Now listen to the curse that God put upon people. Listen to it. Verse 11. Yet there shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of my house, and minister into the house. They shall slay the burnt offerings and the sacrifice of the people. They shall stand before them to minister unto them. Could you notice this, folks? It's a curse that God put upon the people. That they could stand before the people to minister unto the people. It's a curse God put upon them that they stand and they minister to the house and to the things of the house. It says that right here. It's a curse. Folks, if you're satisfied with ministering to people, you're operating under a curse. God said because of their sin, this is what will happen. What's your ministry, folks ask you? Find out what your ministry is. What's your ministry, people? Amen. That's your ministry. The only one. Verse 13, they shall not come. Notice how many times God gets so personal. God said, they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. You hear what God's saying? Go ahead, minister to the people. Go ahead, take care of the house. But you won't be able to come near to me. To minister unto me. A brother said something the other day that really caught my attention. He said, Many of us as Christians are going to be surprised when we stand before God to find out that we can't communicate with God. Because there's a type of communication with God that's developed in this spirit only by ministry unto God. Only there it's developed. And you don't get it in any other exercise. Folks, if you haven't learned to minister unto God, get started. If you haven't learned the practice of God's presence and they're communicating with God, get started. You see, there's a problem. Most of us go before God and pray. And here's what we pray. Father, give me, do for me, Father. Bless me and bless my children, etc., etc. Always asking God for something. Folks, prayer is supposed to be communication. You know what would be well? To go into God's presence and shut up. Really? Go into God's presence 
and give them a chance to get caught up. You've been talking long enough. Give God a chance to talk. Give God a chance to bear his heart to you. To tell you what he wants. By the way, do you know that God has a lot to tell you? Do you know that? <laughs> do you know that the Holy Spirit is in heaven listening to what God is talking about? And then he comes back to tell us what he hears. Do you know that? Let me show you that. Some of you are not sure. John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verses 12 and 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. How be it? When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But notice the next thing. Whatsoever he shall hear. Who is he hearing from? Who is he listening to? I think he's listening to the conversations that go on in heaven. He is not. Whatsoever he hears. Whatsoever he hears. That shall he speak, and he'll show you things to come. Folks, the Holy Spirit has much from heaven that he wants to tell us. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. You know how many times Revelation says that? He that has an ear, let him hear. But you see, there's prayer. Beyond prayer, there is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is thanking God for, for what he's done. You know, just thanking God. But now tell me, what's the difference between worship and thanksgiving? Could you tell me? What's the difference? Worship is thanking God for whom he is. Thanksgiving centers on things. Worship centers on the person. Amen. And I can come into God's presence. By the way, do you wonder why the scripture says they that worship God must worship him in, in spirit? Because God's a spirit. But do you know that you, could, you only know so very much about God? And all right, you go into God's presence and you, you want to thank God for whom he is. And in about exactly 30 seconds, you run out of things to say. That's about, that's about how long it takes me. <laughs> really. But how about the worship in the spirit? Hmm? Could I tell you tonight that there are a lot of things that your spirit, quickened by the Holy Spirit, is aware of? The psalmist David says, I understand more than the ancients. I have more wisdom than all my teachers. Where did he get that from? I think it was just the ministration of the Spirit. And in the Spirit you can come before God and begin communicating Spirit with Spirit. By the way, that's what ministering to God is. And in the spirit, you begin to worship God. In another language, you begin to worship God. And I want to tell you, you can do that for hours on end without running out of things to say. Amen? For hours on end, just pouring out your spirit to God. Now, that's what God created you for, for his pleasure. To minister unto him. To give glory unto him. Can I tell you that as a result of ministering unto God, there is something that takes place in your life? Jude verse 20 speaks about building up yourself in the most holy faith. Praying in the spirit. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4, edifies. 
builds up himself. And folks, any ministry that you have has to be an outflow of the life of Christ. Or it's not a ministry at all. It's wood, it's hay, it's trouble. If it's an outflow of your life, how many of you know tonight that because God blesses something, that doesn't mean he approves of it? Do you know that? There are people who are blessed of God who are not walking according to God's word. There are ministries that are blessed of God that are not walking according to God. How many of you know tonight that God blessed Ishmael? But Ishmael was an attempt to help God out and God doesn't need to be helped out. God desired Isaac. And Ishmael since then has been a hindrance. Folks, you may look at God's blessing in your life. When I read in Romans chapter 2 and verse 5, it says the goodness of God is intended to bring you to repentance. When I see the blessing of God on my life, I thank God for his blessing. But I say, dear God, I pray that your blessing is not simply in mercy. Because many times it is. And there are people who are ministering. And God is blessing because he'd always bless his word. But let your ministry be unto God. Unto God alone. And there'll be blessing. Let me, let me read something to you from Romans chapter 12. You know, verses 1 and 2, I'm sure you all do, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then let's read on. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. Notice verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace, given to us, whether prophecy, etc. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. But now, it's interesting that the Word of God says that the gifts that are in your life, they differ according to the grace of God that is within you. Now, whence comes the grace of God? In Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You receive grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. How many of you know that you can be filled and still yet need to be filled? Now Paul prayed for the Ephesians. That they might be filled with all of the fullness of God. You read that in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19. When you think you are filled with God, ask God to expand your capacity for himself. For there's more of him yet. And I'll tell you this. And we even talk about spiritual gifts, and now it's the Greek word charismata, grace gifts, or things that arise out of the grace of God. But any depth of ministry that flows out of your life, flows out of the life of Christ within you, and not out of your goosebumps. Amen? So, folks, in 
instead of desiring ministry, instead of desiring miracles, what should be your desire? Huh? What should be your desire? As the heart panteth after the water broke, so panteth my soul after thee, O oh God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Out of that, the Lord Jesus will flow in ministry. A depth of ministry that you hadn't imagined. You know, I like the verse that says, right there in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do, exceeding abundantly, above all that you can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, just think about it tonight. The greatest thing you can think of that you desire in God. The greatest thing that you can desire, God is able to do exceeding abundantly of that in you. Amen. God is able to do more in you than you ever dream possible. God is able to make more out of you than you ever thought imaginable. According to the power that worketh in you. You know why? Because God created you to glorify his name. And God is seeking for people in this day. Now, let me just, just give you the verse. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Now as you have all, always obeyed in my presence, now much more in my absence work out your own salvation. With fear and trembling. Verse 13. For it is God. Which worketh within you. Both to will and to do. According to his good pleasure. Would you hear me tonight? God is working. Within you. Seeking to will and to do. According to his good pleasure. He is working inside. Now in fear and trembling before God, you let it work out. Let it work out. Work out your own salvation. I said Philippians 3, sorry, that was Philippians 2. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now do you know that before God's throne, the angels of God, the 24 elders, and they are living creatures who stand day and night continually. And do you know what they are doing? They are worshipping God. Holy, holy, holy. And you know what the scripture says? In the Greek it says, myriads of myriads and chiliads of chiliads of people stand before God doing this. Ministering unto God. And now, let me tell you this tonight. Just as well you get accustomed to it now. Because you're going to be doing it for a long while. For a long while. Praising. Worshipping. And ministering unto God. Let me, let me just give you this. When you come into God's presence, eh, for a while forget that there's anyone around you. Because thinking there are people around you, that's what inhibits you. Now, I want to tell you, in my car, I am a holy roller. <laughs> Particularly when I'm alone, I roll up the windows, I open my mouth, and boy, I go to town, worshiping God. Don't tell anybody I told you that, but sometimes I even raise my hands while I'm going down the road. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, it ought to be that same way in the midst of the congregation when we come together. And with hands raised towards heaven and forgetting the people around, I just came to worship you, Lord. And you begin to minister unto God in the Spirit. And suddenly, 
<laughs> Out of your innermost belly begins to flow forth rivers of living water. Hallelujah. And it begins to flow forth. You know, he shall be like a tree planted where? By the rivers of water. Amen. When you're planted by the rivers of water, you bring forth fruit in season. Your leaves don't wither, but there's a pouring forth on the God. Let's just stand and, and, and worship the Lord. Let's do that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jelen in the color of Tresselamon, the Lia Calamute, Jonalia Colosso, the Lecalemen, the Lera Coroman Samu Shalan, Silvela Ho, Calan, the Levesham, Jelecahos and Drohom, Eleven, the Lekia Suradan, the Locovas, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord and forget not all His benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah, Lord. We are worthy of all the praises. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, Rivera Masuri, lo shundu de amo. Se le gendri mi la hasoyo. Janna la via solando lo beso camin. Praise God, praise God.
getting together an army to march across the land, but he's getting the praisers ready first, because those who are to praise and worship the Lord will go before the army, and the victory is in the praise and the worship to the Lord. That's where the victory's at. Hallelujah. The praisers will bring the victory for the army. Glory to God. And we've got to learn how to praise God, to worship God, to adore him. To stand and praise him with all of our heart and all of our being. What's in us? Holy is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Mighty is the King of glory. Holy is his name. We praise and worship and magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus. Hallelujah. He is who we come to praise and to worship. He is who we come to magnify. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, the name that's above every name. Jesus, hallelujah, glory, bless the name of the Lord of hosts. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Hallelujah, 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 glory. Jesus, my King. Jesus, my Redeemer. Jesus, my Savior. Jesus, my Deliverer. Jesus, my baptizer. Hallelujah. Jesus, my King. Glory to his name. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord of hosts. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. This week, Above all things, we're going to praise and worship the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And in the midst of the praise and the worship will come deliverance, will come healing, will come all that we need as we praise and worship Jesus, the King of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, this is the day, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day that we can praise and worship and magnify thee. Father, we come this day and bring in remembrance those in authority over us in this land. Lord, we ask that you put wisdom and understanding and knowledge in their hearts and their lives. But my God, first of all, bring them to a place of repentance before thee that they bow their knee and call on the name of the Lord for wisdom and guidance and direction. And that they realize that there's no way except by the way of the cross and by the way of Jesus. My God, put a desire in their heart to know thee. Put a longing in their heart. Take the stiff neckness out of them. Lord, put up those who praise and worship thee. Raise up men of, that will stand up and be counted for you and not be ashamed of the gospel. And Lord, those who are contrary to the word of the Lord, put them down, Lord, and raise up those men who will stand to say, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for it, Lord. We praise you for it, Lord. We glorify thy name. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise your Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord. Praise your Jesus. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and LHBC online.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.